And there was no emotion in that whole nonsense. There was no, you know, I, I just... And then the creatures took me out of that room after the metal creature and this pink creature had gone. This creature took me out of that room, assisted by another one, and they pushed me along a corridor which curved slowly in that direction, in, in the, towards my right. And there I was shown many things which even today I don't understand. I was shown little versions of this creature swimming in huge cylinders of what made out of what looked like glass in a pinky pinkish liquid like ugly little ten, little frogs inside the liquid they looked like like aborted human fetuses they were very very terrible and disgusting and then we came to another room and there I saw a number of people undergoing the same torture that I had undergone. One particular person who, whom I passed very close to was a white man, definitely a European, with a yellowish beard and moustache and long straggly blood, blood crusted hair. This man looked into my eyes and I looked into his eyes and we were so, so close we were as I went past him. Then, to cut a long story short, I found myself in the bush again. But, but I was wearing only my shirt. My boots were gone and so was my trousers. So I took off my shirt and wore it around my waist as a, a, a loincloth. And I started traveling, not knowing really in which direction I was going. Then I came to a track and I walked along that. And some time later I saw people coming towards me. It was a group of young men and young women, Mashona people and they were going to a trading store I later learned. I asked them where Elizabeth Moyo's homestead was and they directed me to it but they kept a safe distance away from me and later I, I learned why. I was carrying a horrible non-human smell upon me. When at long last I came to Mrs. Simoyo's village, all the dogs in that place went hysterical. They came at me in a pack, wanting to tear me to pieces. And only the villagers managed to save my life then. Mrs. Simoyo asked me where I had been, and I said I did not know. And then she said, I know you, have, you had been taken by the little ones. I said, yes, I cannot understand. She said, you must not try to understand. You were chosen by the gods as a living sacrifice. So don't even try to talk about this. But how could I not talk about it? I wanted to understand what had been done to me, by whom and why. Even now, sir, I still want to understand what it was all about. And many years later, I met a remarkable white woman, Elizabeth Clara, a famous South African woman who had worked for British intelligence during the war. 
and who we are told had been impregnated by a being from the stars, Akko. I asked Elizabeth what, what was the meaning of the strange thing which was done to me. Because since that time, I had come across many black people, well over 200, who had been through the same torture as I. I had come across many black as well as cape-colored women who had been mysteriously impregnated by the same creatures that I had gone through the hands of. And let me tell you one other interesting thing before I forget. About a year after I had underwent this terrible experience, I was walking along Jeppe Street in Johannesburg delivering parcels when a white man shouted at me to stop. I stopped. I thought he was a policeman wanting to arrest me for some reason. And when I tried to produce my identity document, the white man said, listen, I don't want your nasty word passbook kefa. I said, then sir, what do you want, boss? He said, listen, where did I see you? Where did I see you? I said, I don't know, boss. But I, he looked very familiar to me. And then he said, listen, don't bullshit me, man. Where did I see you? Where did you and I meet? Then I said to him, I saw you in Rhodesia, in a certain place. You were lying on a table. If I had hit that white man with a fist, he would not have reacted the way he did. He went pale, almost dirty gray in appearance, and he turned away with a terrible dirty word and he walked away. His eyes were filled not with anger, say, but with pure naked terror. Astonishing story. Yes, but there is more, sir. There is more because I still want to know what was done to me. Say, one day you and I must talk more in greater depth than now. I would like, I would like to tell you that since that time, I have found that I know things that that a man of my standard of education does, shouldn't know. These hands, and those who know me can confirm this, these hands not only have made these sculptures, using ancient African metal casting secrets. These hands, believe it or not, can make guns and working jet engines. And one day I wish you to come back to South Africa and I will show you one of these things. I know things which I shouldn't know and it started at that time. Now, you see, sir, I don't, I want to know what am I since that terrible time. My life as a man was really messed up. And one day I will, t let me tell you, sir, since that time, I have become a very confused creature.